Alrighty. In the top right hand side of our round of eight, we are gonna have the blue Protoss player, Team Exxon's Geralt. Taking on the Red Zerg, who is the one the one top three player that didn't qualify from the first two, right? It's Serral. Obviously, between Raynor, Clem, and Serral, we were expecting them to take the top three or the first three qualifiers in this event. Um, and that means one of them was always going to end up in qualifier number three. It's just how it is. Unfortunately, it turned out to be Serral. That Raynor Serral series was kind of wild the other day. That was that was brutal. The Clem Serral series was was, a, was more fun. The first qualifier that we had. Both of those are available on the YouTube channel if you'd like to check it out. YouTube.com forward slash Wardy TV. You guys can go check that out if you would like to. If you want to go catch up on those matches from last week's qualifiers, um, I'd, I'd suggest watching. I'd, honestly, even the ZVZ was pretty entertaining. It was it was fun in its own way. It's not the usual series I'd upload to YouTube, but it was like I say, it was fun in its own way. So um, yeah, um, we're obviously getting to some Serral right now in this round of eight matchup. This is some ZVP. Intrigued as to what, uh, as to what the plan is right now, because Geralt has been complaining about having unlucky brackets every time, always running into a Rain or, or a Serral or somebody along those lines, and it has been a little bit rough for him to be fair. Since yeah, Adept is chrono boosting out at the moment, getting that underway, Stargate is building in the main. We do have a Ling gonna go out the top side, a few Lings out to the right, and gonna go jump on that Proby. This probe just taking a little bit of damage. This is gonna be a Stargate opening. The cool thing about Geralt is he's not like a, a super aggro player, so when he goes into a matchup against someone like Serral, I don't just imagine he's gonna try and cheese the socks off Serral, right? You know, I don't, I don't think he's going to be like, ha-ha, here we go. No, I kind of expect Geralt to actually give us a pretty straight-up, kind of straightforward game. Because that's just the sort of player he is. And that might, you know, honestly, that might work against him. I'd say one of the greatest strengths of players such as Raynor and Serral are their ability to just say, you know what, let's cheese this one. That's all in this time. And to mix that into, the, into their play, making them less predictable, less easy to work, you know, to counter... Because now every single time you can't cut corners against these guys because they might just be all in on you, right? So, there's definitely something to be said about that, but it, what's fun about it for us, at least, is it means we're probably going to get at least the attempt of a longer game from Geralt, which is always a fun little thing to see. Let's see how this uh, ends up going. Uh, four drones killed. Sorry, I just moved my mic up and forgot to bring it back down before I started to talk again. Um, four drones killed is not bad at all for just one adept going down and you killed three zerglings. Really good start from Geralt. I mean, in terms of damage done, it does not get much better than that. My goodness, and then the uh, first Oracle came in for a couple of kills. Sorry, we missed that. I actually didn't see that one on the minimap at all until the kills were there. It nearly went down, which is obviously sad that it's low HP now. Makes it a little bit less useful later on. Second Oracle deflected perfectly, and Serral does not take any further damage. But to be fair, he really couldn't afford to. So Adapt is going to move over. These few lings are... Going to be picked away at, so Fueling's going down, Nexus in a pile on the 12 o'clock, and another Oracle popping out, so this is Triple Oracle. Again, Triple Oracle's always a bit sad when one of your Oracles is low HP, because you'd love to have all three of these Oracles able to really come in and harass. Obviously, that's just not the case right now. If that low HP Oracle could get back home, it could be the third base defender, which is not a bad role to have. Obviously, very safe from any sort of anti-air there. Other Oracle goes low HP at the moment. That's a little bit rough. Did he... 
Oh my god, he lost the other one as well. He tried to come in for Stasis Ward of all things. Interesting. Alright, well, Stasis Ward will fade away. These couple of adepts gonna need the oracles to help them out. Can they get that help? Just one of the oracles activating too is nice. Just, you know, being very conservative with the energy as Cyril has quit droning. And he is starting to march. The queens, the roaches coming up as well. This oracle opening, it, the one thing it is not as good against is going to be a queen attack. Because these queen walks as, uh oh, these adepts though could fight the queens before the queens are ready to fight anything. That could be good. No, the adepts don't want anything to do with it. They're afraid of your other units reinforcing. Which makes sense. Um... But yeah, the, the oracles obviously don't have the power that the Voidrays have, right? So it does depower your... Or you just don't have as much defensively. So let's see if Geralt will find a way to defeat this Queen Walk of Serral, which is already on its way up to the top side of the map. So there we go. Adept's going to shade back up to the 12 o'clock once again. I think Roach Ravager coming through. The Queen's coming in as well. I mean, there's a lot of cannons building up here. If there's a way to defend it, it probably is with buying time in those cannons on the way up. Because cannons are going to put a good amount of damage out. Obviously, you can Corrosive Valve them down, but it takes a little while. And you've got to decide to Corrosive Valve those instead of, you know, using the Corrosive Valve to force the units back. Super Battery going to come into play. Just has to be careful because a lot of the Adepts top side are obviously way out of range of the Super Battery at the moment. Extra cannons still finishing up. And the only thing that's really left here for Serral is going to be Lings and Queens. A couple of Ravages... I Means the Queen's trying back away, they're chased, and they saw take some serious hits as well. I mean, obviously, the Queen should never really get home unless they get escorted the entire way by this Zerg army. Now, Serral realizes this has not worked. The cannon production was good, and with the cannons up, Serral decides to go drones, flare, and just to build up in general from here on out. From back at the top. Again, the Ling is looking to see what else they can do. Just going to be seeing a queen or two out around the side. Trying the Robo just setting up. That plus one attack still coming through. Our Zerglings of several are back over to the right. Trying to decide what else they want to do right now. Your depths are I'm gonna take down a couple creep tumors. I mean, yeah, again, slows down a lot in general. This should be Geralt's advantage, of course, but you know, it's Serral. I, 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 I still have this Serral factor when I'm cast with Serral, you know, where. I kind of don't believe that anything he does is ever going to result in the loss. <laughs> like, it's one of those, that, like, it's really hard to get past this in my head, but, you know, I look at it and, you know, I see he's only equal on drones, his fourth base is obviously late from where it should be, and yet I'm still like, well, it's Serral, right? It means, you know, the fact he's called Serral means he's probably still in an okay place. <laughs> just, just accepting or realizing how dumb that really is. As, uh, these lings do get a nice catch on the adepts, so that's the thing. Serral is so good at finding the little mistakes from here on out. That will even this game up. Stuff like picking off those adepts for free. I mean, that just instantly takes away some supply from Geralt. It takes away the possible harassment. I mean, that's always going to be seen as a victory. and the Zendri's out the front. Now the Disruptor's coming through. Actually, I mean, you look at what Serral's building. He obviously has a lot of Roach Ravager, but now moving into melee upgrades and Ling Bane. Yeah, the Disruptors are good for now against the Ravagers, for sure. When the when the Ravagers get traded out for a little bit more like Ling Bane Muta, that's where Colossi might be a bit better, obviously. Lost sign not against the Muters, but against the Ling Bane at least. Of course, if you go Colossi, then Corruptors could be made as well. 
It should just be a muted plan, though, from Serral. I don't see why it wouldn't be muted. It's not like... You know, Geralt does have some stack defense up, obviously, but... Yeah, it does make a lot of sense. How many? Probably not a ton. Probably, like, 10 max, I would say. I would say that's probably his upper limit of how many he wants to make here. This would feel like, if anything, muters into... Or back into... The ground army. More commitment to that ground force, and... Using the mutas as a distraction slash a bit of harassment to then lead into what is a very you know powerful attack from them. So pushing forward right now, these banes looking to come through, disrupt a shot fires, gets a creep tumor. I'm not going to try and come up this ramp as well. I mean, you still got a pretty good army here as uh, Geralt. You just got to make sure to hit the well. These disruptors need to be hitting, right? That one that misses absolutely could have turned around and done a lot better than it did. Hits a good set of ravages on that right side over here. Again, he's a bit more confident where the units are going to go to, but doesn't have that and loses a little bit extra. Nice force fields. There's a Ling Bane that gets caught, and that's probably going to buy Geralt now the time to get up to Storm. Obviously, with Storm completing, you're going to move into. Uh, a much improved position here, as that is going to be a chunk of Banes going down. Only Stalkers eating the Baneling shots from the ones that turned around. Hmm. Alright, I'm liking a lot of this. I'm liking a lot of what's being done. Oh, it's moving back down to the bottom again. Just going to see another Baneling going to get picked away at there. Zealots are on the left side, and obviously this is something that Serral has to send quite a few units to go and deal with. He's going to try and split the Zealots to soak up some Baneling shots. Yeah, but having to split obviously means they're not just sat on that hatchery dealing damage, which is obviously going to slow you down even further as well. And now the split up the Lings get easy surrounds too, so Serral just moving those Banes around, keeping the Zealots split, and using it as a chance for Lings to get full surrounds where they really usually just would never have this happen. So, pretty well, well, very well handled, really, from several as another disruptor shot flies through, and Geralt is pushing down to the bottom right corner. Another disruptor shot or two, and he is connecting a little bit here or there. Again, this one misses. It's the one thing that Geralt just needs to improve that little bit, just a few of these as only one storm goes out before the High Templar hurts. He's just... Some of these disruptor shots are so close to connecting. Don't get me wrong, these Zerg units, they move quick, they move fast, but usually you should at least be able to track in for at least a kill or two. And so many of these disruptor shots are just missing everything. And obviously credit to Serral because he's microing around those as well. And that's another part of the reason it maybe isn't going so well for Geralt with those disruptors. There's obviously the High Templar going down there before they cast storms was disastrous. I believe each of them had at least two storms available and we saw what? I think we might have seen two storms on top of each other and that was about it. Yeah. There's little mistakes from Geralt just all adding up. To something that Serral can take full advantage of because he hasn't made any mistakes in the last few minutes. And again, that's what's so powerful about Serral is that he knows how to play it. He knows what to do. He knows the approach to take and he's pretty freaking good at uh, doing the right thing. You know, he knew earlier when he was hitting that base, he knew when to back it up. He tried to keep as many units as alive as he could so he could drone a bit more freely without the counterattack immediately forcing more units. And then he just, you know, that preserved a, a little bit of an advantage for him, something he could walk away with, and while he probably was behind backing away from that fight, it wasn't so far behind that again, someone like Sever wasn't going to be able to draw himself back into it, and again, that's exactly what has happened here. Now, we do have carrier production on the way, and that's the one thing that Geralt has had this game, is without much counter-harassment or counter-attacks happening to him, he's had quite a bit of freedom to just tech up as he wishes, including into these carriers now, so... All the fights have kind of happened on Geralt's terms. He's been mostly the one saying, okay, let's fight now, let's fight now. So he's been able to sort of fight when he's ready for the next stage of production to start up behind it as well. So you know, there's something to be said about that. That's a beautiful disruptor shot. Just picks up those few Banelings that are trying to roll on through. There you go with uh, Serral going to try and jump on this. Gets a disruptor with the initial uh, Baneling connection. Storm's going down. He's going to try and squeeze through this little gap. Additional Banelings also showing up, the Ling Roach Ravager pulling back into the center. 
in the game those carriers are continuing to produce right now. This is of course good though for Serral. Anytime you're trading out the economy of the Protoss player it means that he's just going to be that little further behind while you work off of 96 drones. So that's obviously a big part of Serral's plan to stay active and to stay ahead here. Trades have actually been pretty good from Geralt. Look at that resources lost, about 7k in his favor. You can just see how the income graph has grown into Cell's favor over the last 8 minutes or so. And Geralt's just not been able to do anything about that. Now Cell with that Spire up from way earlier in the game that he never made use of. Now he's able to make the Corruptors, so he's actually going to have a reasonable answer to these carriers as well. Oh, but Ling Bane around the top is not going to find much as in the center of the map Geralt is continuing to set up his carriers. Mothership overhead as well. Still just the three of them here. Two more now finally making their own way forward and they're starting to get to this kind of scarier carrier cannon. Still only plus one air weapons mind you. Wouldn't mind to see a plus two. We've seen a lot of Protoss who have just been able to take plus two air weapons and just go as of late. And now Geralt is just a going into that bottom right hand side. Left side base down from the earlier Zealots trying to come back up. So Serral is going to be knocked back down to four bases here. And Geralt is going to maintain control over Serral's economy. So left hand side those Zerglings are going to get rid of a Nexus again. That's going to be keeping this to, I say, a four base against four bases. Five bases up from Geralt, so his income's actually going to start taking a bit of a lead here, as can be seen on the income tab. So for the first time in a while, Geralt is going to get some advantages in this game again. 21 drones went down. It's obviously a pretty decent chunk of the economy of Serral as well. It's unfortunate none of those cannons actually reached the mineral line, so once the lings were in there, we're actually not taking any further damage until the army showed up. Continuing to the south. There's a little bit more creep gets cleaned out again. Yeah, well, this is going to get on top of this base. A lot of the drones going down. This bailing nest will fall. And I think Geralt is in a pretty good spot right now. And we've seen the Overlord of the front going down. These Ravages and the Roach kind of coming through. And I'm going to try and base trade this out. But Serral, at some stage, he's going to have to fight this army. He's making Broodlords. Where are they morphing in? Over here. So not going to be caught as they morph or anything like that. Okay, but you're sort of... I mean, you're beginning to sacrifice your bases. Your production structures... You're not going to be able to build much else behind this as uh, a Serral. What's he actually got left up? A spawning pool and an infestation pit. That's that's what he can do now. That's all he can use, and that's about to go down too. And he's not rebuilding any of it. To be fair, he doesn't have the money to rebuild much of it. Serral is on a lower drone count than Geralt is on probes. And Geralt has the bank as well. He's going to recall away. Okay. And it feels like he's done enough just to keep on pushing, or at least to try and keep on pushing. Maybe wanted to make sure he didn't lose another base of his own. Maybe wanted to make sure he could secure this one base of his own that continues to mine. Obviously left a few of those units over toward the main base. That was a bit of a shame, but... Well, he's got a large bank. And Cyril has obviously put down, a, well, three current bases, bottom right and the far left-hand side. With only 40 drones between those hatcheries. Now, Lara now spawning pool coming back online now as Serral finally start to reinvest into some of that production.
Anti T's just show up onto the brand new lair, and they're actually going to make a good bid for it. Transfusions are going to say no, though. It's not a lot of transfusions left as the ultras get on top. Not a bad try, though. I was genuinely pretty close to killing this. One DT going to kill off the bottom right base. As uh, Geralt pushes through, seeing the changelings. Looks like he might want to try and force a fight. He's just being very respectful of what Serral does have. As Serral sits down, 165 supply to 200. Trailing heavily at this point of the game. I was going to start firing up onto <clears throat> a couple of voids. These brutes firing as well. Mothership gets abducted. Incorruptor's going to get that Mothership kill. That's a pretty big pickoff. It's in the center. A lot of these changelings will be going down as well. MDT is just going to do what they can. I mean, they've got Blink. They can A, get out, and, and B, they're just, you know, they, they test the waters. They see what's around. Even if they do go down, Geralt can... Okay, he can't afford to replace a turn. He doesn't have a lot of gas, Geralt, if we're going to comment on one thing in particular here. And it's only because a lot of his gas is going into his army production, right? His actual army is very valuable. If you look at the eight gas costs of it, that's six and a half K gas spent on this Prost army. More, more gas and minerals spent on the Zerg army. That I'm actually kind of surprised about, but I guess he does at this stage. And uh, Serral have some Infestors, Vipers, Corruptor Brood, Ultra, Ravagers. There's not a single low-tech unit in the game for Serral. It is all very heavily teched up. It is all very expensive, gas-heavy units. And Geralt doesn't see any reason to push the issue. He can take another base. He's keeping the bases of his opponent denied. The only way Geralt loses is if he pushes in... Takes too bad of a fight and gets overran. So he's going to take every precaution possible up until he is feeling super safe before he fights. And again, it might feel like he's just being a little silly. He's like, well, Geralt, just go. Why can't you? Why not just take every precaution? If you're in an advantageous position against Zeril, why not just take every possible advantage you can and go from there? Because even Zeril can't just make money out of nowhere. So he can't just make money if he only has these two bases. And Geralt very much so knows he only has these two bases. How do you win this is Serral? Question from the chat. You hope Geralt overcommits into you, I think. There's two ways that a Zerg army beats a Protoss army like this. And one of them is to be very efficient with Vipers abducting and getting a kill every now and then with the Corruptors. That just can't happen because that takes a long time and Serral is not going to have the time... To do that, you will inevitably lose some stuff yourself. You don't have the base to do that. If Serral is on like five or six bases against this army, sure. Against the army right now, you really are just hoping that Geralt is the one to make a major mistake. I mean, that's nice. You get a carrier, but again, one carrier difference is not the end of the world at the moment from Geralt. He looks at this and says, well, that's, that's a loss, but, you know, I'm still mostly aiming for that W at this point. Probes going down as DTs deny the bottom right side base yet again. That base is once again shut down. Ultra Ravager makes its way around the bottom right. Go down, jump in on this. Still moving for the center. A couple of these swalk throws are being picked away at, so a bit more damage being done. Again, you know, as Gal's point of view, why not just keep denying these bases, make your own army stronger, get a bank up. I love the addition of the Tempest against pretty much everything Serral has. Ranged units that deal massive damage. They are going to be, uh, <laughs> they're going to be a pleasant sight for, for Geralt in these fights. Serral's going to try and send a couple of brews a little bit north to at least try and harass. Again, remember that the base that Geralt currently holds, if he holds this top left, those bases are currently going to be all the bases that Serral should ever have in this game as well. 
If any base that Geralt takes from here would be him mining from several half of the map. Of course, with the efficiency that Geralt has held, I just showed that on the screen, but it's about a 7k resource loss advantage. With that sort of efficiency, this just should not be any problem. You should just outmine several in major ways. Dropping a revelation down, giving you that range to utilize on the Tempest, but you've got to be careful of the Corruptors. The last thing you want to go wrong is Sarah will try double expanding bottom right hand corner. Plus three missiles coming up on what is a newly built red aspire in the back of the far left hand nine o'clock base. Only six and a half minutes deep on this game right now. I see a couple of creep teams being picked off. The lane's gonna go up a left. I mean, I want to be a bit more entertaining for you guys, but uh, to me, this game is very much so a waiting game of just waiting for Serral to either break free or Geralt deciding to just go for it. Five probes just went down. Timson Carrot is going to be coming through, grabbing a couple of those creep team as we do have this army of Geralt. Continuing down the bottom side, a few drones going down as DT is going to go in toward that hatchery. Now we do on the left side see Serral. A bit of trouble. Ravager gets picked off. I, I mean, he's going to go and try and break this top left-hand base, but this is putting units out of position. If King Geralt not just go and try and corner those units in, that's a beautiful fungal uh, abduct combo. I mean, again, if Serral's ever going to make this work, it's trades like that that bring him back into this. I kind of thought Geralt would just kind of come up here and clean out these units trying to hit his base. That I mean, because these units aren't really missing from the fight in the sense of... Oh no, they're missing. I can't actually engage, you know, from Serral's point of view. So maybe it was just a good chance for him to clean that out and, and get a couple kills, back it away. Serral's starting to mine from the bottom side of the map. Efficiency difference is only 6,000 now. Geralt, 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 don't tell me you're going to start letting this slip away. you got to just keep that bottom right denied. Just fight the left side. I mean, I can understand why you don't want to fight. But at the same time, maybe I don't. Only 18 Corruptors. Spore crawl accounted for. I actually think he's got the carry account to just do okay here. I don't think Serral necessarily has all that much of a an advantage in the actual armies either. And yes, obviously queens. When you add it all up together, and it's very hard to tell this in the middle of a game. Bottom right is denied. This base here might just end up being denied as well. Stalker Archon making the move. The Infester. And of course, uh, drop a fungal. Oh, misses the stalkers. They already blinked back. Second fungal will land. Stalkers already picking their way through these ultras at the same time. And Abduct gets another of the carriers. Now we're going to see Temis, though, firing back. And they are going to start picking their way through some of these Broodlords. On top of that, the storm coming through. We're just going to keep pushing. Now we're going to disengage. The Parasitic Bomb still active. Perhaps just try to give chase. High Temple are going to say, no, you do not. Storm after storm, and the Corruptors are taking quite the beating at the moment. As they pull away to the left-hand side, Hype is going to try and get some energy back once again on the top. Overlord is still taking a little bit more damage. I mean, there's a Ling over here. This is settling down again. I 
Yeah, a little bit of a cleanup here. Still moving back down. Geralt is gonna go. Oh, he gets feedbacks on all the Vipers, and he's actually hitting them all as well. Only one of them survives. A couple of abducts never led to much. And the bottom right-hand side, drones are gonna try and go back to mine. They've been long distance, and I believe the bottom right, which I think maybe the DT saw. There ain't any mineral patches here anymore. So this base is not that useful. There's 40 minerals left. It's about to mine out. So 6 o'clock base gets mined out. The problem is the 9 o'clock base is on its way to mine out too. It's the only mining base left in the game. How much has it got left on it? 180 gas. 60, 600, 900. About 1.1k minerals and 80 gas. I mean, the problem is you don't have any gas income, so you're actually just straight up not able to afford anything that's actually useful. You can make queens and lings, uh, and that's going to be it. Because you're going to have minerals, and uh, not even that many minerals, just a few. But you are going to be 100% gas starved. And once again, Geralt has tried to take this bottom right base multiple times. It's going to cancel again. There's no issue with that, just try and try and try again. An additional round of carriers on the way through, and we do have, my friends, a... <laughs> I, I, I fight it's got to happen soon, because Serral knows he's got no mind, so he has to force something. He can't just sit back any longer. There's nothing to wait for. Every second that passes right now is money that Geralt is mining that Serral is not. But it's also not easy to attack into this Protoss army. It's not really an army you want to attack into in the first place. So how does Serral do it? I mean, the Brood Lord Count's trying to move on through. The Fungals are going to be vital. He's going to need to spell cast perfectly here if he wants to try and win this. Feedback hits. I believe that's another of the Vipers are gone. Almost impossible to replace now unless you're going to somehow find some gas mining. I don't know where you're going to get it from. And here he goes. The fight we've been expecting for a little while. Parasite bombs do go down. Disruptor shot gonna hit these queens, killing a bunch of them before transfusions are used. Mm. I mean, honestly? Oh my god, the fungal parasitic bomb combo did a lot. Don't tell me that Geralt is not gonna be able to clean this army up. <sighs> the corruptors are slowly getting their way through all of these carriers, and Geralt's supply is down hard. Oh no, Geralt, did you really just mess this fight up? Serral has like nothing left. He denies the top left of Geralt. Geralt is also mined out as well, by the way. I didn't really talk about Geralt's money because I just assumed he was going to be fine. But it's kind of come down to this one fight. Serral has not allowed Geralt to take his side of the map. And that fight was disastrous for Geralt. Resources lost swings into Serral's favor. Oh my no freaking oh, really really Geralt's trying to take the bottom right hand side there's brood lords on the way to deny it stalkers i just don't think the stalkers can fight the brood lords that's why he's trying to target to fight it down with the carriers oh my god the fungal and parasitic bombs just did so much in the end and he just didn't really respect them he just thought he was going to win the fight is Serral actually going to win this game you've got to be joking me Man, like, I just didn't... I mean, I... You know, okay, my my bad. I will admit, I didn't really talk about Geralt mining now, because to me, Geralt had this base, and Serral had no way to push it. G, G, well played. Serral's gonna win. You're right, so he wasn't able to just rebuild. He had a bit of a bank, but not a lot of it. Man, it's one of those games you kind of got to go back over and, w and watch again, don't you? Try and figure out all the exact little specifics. I, I, yeah, yes, obviously I think it's a, it's a throw from Geralt, but I don't think it's a throw in how he sat back and how he waited. I think it's a throw in how he engaged that final fight, because that fight should have just never looked like that. Like, he just needed to spread the units out a bit. He could have disengaged more easily after dropping down some storms and some feedbacks. And he just did none of that. He didn't try and save any of his units. And that fight in particular was just the, the tipping point. That well, that, that just swung everything. It was just a very, very bad fight from Geralt that was absolutely capable of going the other way around. And unfortunately, when you're going to play against Serral, you just cannot make those mistakes. 
He just can't. He just can't. Geralt top right is down a game. Sorry, I should put the score on the scoreboard. Bottom left, our red zerg is Cyril. Let's get this up and ready to go. A spawning pool finishing probe is going to move around a little. Did expect a longer game when we went into this series. Something like that? Like that what actually just happened there? I was not expecting that one at all. Let's see our probe escaping up the top side. Jack and Arthur is this map too. I'll be moving up the right. I'm just going to be seeing the Twilight Council building up here as well. The products facility on the natural expansion. A couple of adepts are making their way around the south. Looking for a wrap around. Adepts are taking some damage. First one goes down. Other adept off to the side. Stalker is going for this Ovi right now, trying to clean this out. Let's do otherwise just have ourselves a Dark Shrine opening here from Garrett. So something very different is this Overlord passes overhead. You obviously see the Twilight Council, but you did not see the Dark Shrine. So Parting just win with DTs earlier against DRG in the Korean qualifier from today. Let's see if uh, Serral can be a little bit more on point. Defending against this. That's going to be seeing the, uh... Killing some to move around. Adept, Zealot, joining together. Protron's going to be finishing up from Serral at the front there. Really do just kind of chill out a little bit after that last game, man. Waiting for these DTs, waiting for this prism, and waiting to see if Serral can defend. Because right now, Spores are not ready. He needs to start those in the next, I mean, like, few seconds, I wanted to say. Of course, it's Serral, so he does. He didn't start them then. When were they going to come into play? They should be here in time to make this work. DTs can warp in on the left side, go to the main. The big thing now is just making sure you have units where you're expecting this attack to come from. And at the moment, the prism's on the left. There's not been anything to tell Serral the prism's on the left, apart from maybe a lack of presence on the right side. Four DTs, they could absolutely kill this spore in the main base. They are 100%. And the thing is, you can't actually all in here a cell with Ling Ravager. I think he's 100% reading this as a, a glaive opener. Oh, he's just built a ton of drones. Yeah, 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 he's going to go to main base. Got to go. Stop the spore crawler from dying. He will. Yeah, the one thing is, so you can't really get aggressive here as Serral because obviously the DTs will just warp in across the map and you don't have mobile detection. You don't have overseers. It was really important that he shut this down because if, if those units were able to jump on the, the, the spore crawler, you lose that, you lose the main base, and then you start losing a lot in this game. So that would have been obviously very, very rough. All right, well, just going to see the lings coming through. We're going to surround on that Nexus. Nexus is going to fall. As the Adept and a couple DTs joined up as well. Probe still being picked away at. Rest of our lings are going back around. He's still swiping, going for another probe at the front there. Probe nearly going down.
<clears throat> Much better start from several, obviously. Everything that Geralt's tried to do this game is being shut down. Third Nexus is very late compared to when you would ever usually have it by in a PvZ. So everything is looking uh, pretty bad for him in that regard. Muslings going back and forward a little bit. Well, as roaches come up and post on missiles and the roach speed is coming through as well. So we continue our way forward, figuring out just what is going to be next from uh, from both. I think in general, I mean, obviously, Sarah looking to counterattack and he's just going to get in. And Geralt is moving across the map. Oh, my God. The warping doesn't even stop the rest of the links getting in. And now he's going to recall. I mean, he actually just recalls a handful of zealots, but... He probably had enough zealots to deal with this. It was just that they were out of position more than anything else. Well, 16 probes already down. Does this army in the middle of the map look like it'll do anything to you? Not really, I want to say. Yeah, Roach Ravager's going to keep on moving up again. The 16 probes to start this off is the real nail in the coffin, because maybe as Geralt you could get away with this if you hadn't taken any worker damage. You know, your worker count's still decent. You know, Serral's on a low drone count building an army. But losing workers on top of this just means that Serral's low drone count is still a relatively high worker count compared to everything else going on in this game right now. Two more DTs warping in. Roach is being swiped. Spire coming up. TTs around the right side. Uh, yeah, so we'll just backed it up. Obviously, he has got the spire done. He can make muters if he wants to, and he will make muters. Blink is a long way off. There's a pretty decent Archon count on the map. There's a pretty decent Archon count going around. Do you have this 1DT of Geralt is going to go down the south here. But plus 2 missile is going to be about halfway done. DT is going to move in and start swiping down a few of these drones. So a few drones going down already. Three workers being picked off. That's the sort of harassment you need at the moment. Going pretty well. Eight drones. Gonna even up the work account. Problem is, the work account's about to drop from Geralt. Stag defense not ready on this main base yet. Stalkers warping in. Remember, those Stalker warpings will not have blink, though, so Stalkers have to slowly run between the bases right now, and even just having the Stalkers run between bases is gonna give you the potential to just win this game because they're gonna be out of position when this larger army shows up as well. So it's all building up to this for Serral. Once again, I don't think it really matters all that much what happens with the Mutalisks. As the force field goes down, a couple of these roaches are going to be pushed back. To begin with, at least. Two more corrosive valves going down. The armies are going to stay split away from each other. Now, ah, Roach Ravager comes back in once again. A few corrosive valves going down on that battery. I was going to see the Stalkers blinking through the Robo Bay is about to, sorry, the Disruptor is about to finish up. And Disruptor start to save you on the ground. Well, Serral is going to back it up and go into more muters. Interesting choice. Obviously wants to go a little bit more harassment focused continuing on from here. 
to do see Gerald. Gonna keep some units at the front. The Roach is in the main base. Gonna burrow up at the back. And here come the Mutas. Into the main, into the natural once again. Gonna fly through for a bunch of these probes. So good to keep probes going down. Stoker's gonna blink through, jumping on a bunch of the mutilists, and again, Roach Ravager getting ready to go as well. Ready to come forward and to try and get on top of the Mistalkers here, so away we go. Jumping in on these, Disruptor from the right hand side is likely to fire in a moment, I wanted to say, but apparently not just yet. Is that on cooldown? No, just didn't want to fire. And the mirror has been handled pretty well, I say, as the roaches obviously show up in the main base. And again, several is just going all out, hit and harass anywhere and everywhere with that burrow coming through to just be annoying. Keep those roaches out of location for us, you know, out of sight for a while. Force extra detection and so on to come clean them up. They pop back up again. DTs are still here. The meters are going to come in the main base. No overseer, otherwise you'd just be laying waste to all of these DTs. That'd be pretty nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, if you just had the, uh, if you just had an overseer, those DTs would go down. That's a pretty nice pickoff. Stalkers come running in. Of course, nowadays they do have that blink available to them. As we'll see it used here to try and disengage the right. Stalkers actually being fought by the meters. So the meters want a piece of this action. They don't want to give that up just yet. They wanted to go for it. Eleven more meters still producing. As we've got ourselves the spine crawler production on the way in as well. It's bringing our spine crawlers up. Obviously, making sure you're not going to die to a counterattack. You're on five bases here as Serral. Leading 1 0 in the series and looking to go through to what would be the semi finals today as we move through this qualifier. You would play a laser or. I believe it was maybe Keller Zer in that round of eight match against a laser. Maybe I'd take a quick cheeky peek at the bracket, guys. Give me a sec. Just some ravages come through. Bunch of those archons going down. Mutas dive into the main pylon falls. A bunch of these stalkers being picked off as well. So stalkers taking some hefty damage right now. We come back through, and we are going to get rid of an archon. Now those mutas just about going to dodge out of here. On the right hand side, the mutas and roaches and ravages going to kind of run into this army. And Geralt is not going to have enough to hold on. Serral is going to win this out, my friends. He is going to take it down. I mean, it's freaking Serral, man. Even game one, which he wasn't meant to win at multiple points, he wins. And that's GG's.